and welcome to the Zordon Files podcast. I'm Joe. Here with me is my co-host, Dan. Hello and greetings. And do give this video a share and subscribe if you enjoyed the topic and if you enjoyed our last video in this series, as we'll be exploring more of the Power Ranger lore in the in this very very special podcast today's topic is how strong are the power rangers in their morphed form now certainly unmorphed they gain certain advantages over other people such as they're being slightly faster being able to recover broken limbs a little faster being slightly stronger and of course slightly more agile with and having increased acrobatics now with that said the question remains how strong are the morph forms now the white ranger for example in the episode where tommy's in a coma in dino thunder he ends up picking up a tree and throwing it at tommy now a large log like that is no light object that your average person could lift up with general ease as the white ranger did also as the white ranger uh tommy would end up injuring blows from the likes of goldar zed and uh, many others zed in particular with a single blast is able to kill your ordinary in good shape well in shape humans such as two security guards uh guarding the egg in the movie well the egg of ivan Ooze. in a single second he destroyed them and yet, being blasted in morph form a few times hardly affected Tommy. Now, it did wound him a little, but he seems to have recovered relatively quickly. What is more is that Jason, several times, has, uh, with his sword, been able to cause some slight explosions. He's been able, which just simply the energy required for that would be considerable. He has also demonstrated the ability to kick people for a quite the distance probably a yard or two and as his red ranger form is one of the weaker ones in comparison to later seasons more forms this is in no way a slight against jason it's merely that his power scale film, yes he does not have the secret power of phados or a zeo crystal now his gold zeo powers do show quite a bit of strength you have, uh, yes, there's the element of explosions, which are slightly exaggerated in Power Rangers. With that said, the Rangers have been able to, I believe in the comics, in episode three of Power Rangers Lost Galaxies, while well, the Red Ranger ends up jumping as high as the face of a giant radster. Well, just that accomplishment itself seems to suggest that there is some sort of increased strength in the Rangers. And you also have the Time Force Quantum Ranger has jumped onto his Zord, which is 76.7 meters tall. Given that, yes, this is leg strength, but it, surely it must require some degree of, of enhanced strength to reach these heights. And that's where the evidence suggests there is some degree of super strength. Now, to what degree? Well, it is, there are various ways of reading it. You can read it as it is simply below the, now if we set up a tier list real quickly before I continue, one could rank it as you have Wonder Woman and Spider-Man at one level, you have Superman, then you have perhaps Thor and then Hulk. And it is certainly possible to rank the Power Rangers below Spider-Man and Wonder Woman. With this tier though, one could also, if one wishes, watch it as the Power Rangers being able to be slightly above the Superman level. Which, as to what camp you fall in, it's more a matter of personal choice. But it is undeniable that the Power Rangers have a certain amount of super strength. And heck, if you want an actual accomplishment of super strength by a slightly less well-powered team, in Episode 5 of In Space... The Red Ranger, Andros, is able to jump as high as a giant eclipse, ecliptor's face and get struck by him, only to continue fighting. Now, the space powers don't seem to have been as advanced 
as some of the others were as powerful, given the accomplishments of the Lost Galaxies and those of the previous season in, well, the case of Zeo. The fact that they could take hits from giant enemies who clash with the Zords, who can lift up buildings with relative ease, suggests that the Rangers are generally invulnerable for the most part to most attacks and can basically take hits from the likes of, say, a Godzilla tier enemy, which in some cases they may be able to deal out hits almost relative to that. Almost. Perhaps not quite. But so it's up for debate. I've always fallen into personally the camp where they're slightly above Superman, or at least most are, such as the Mighty Morphin team after, well, the movie. And you have Lost Galaxies, which I think generate similar levels of energy. Same with Zeo. Dino Thunder is perhaps just below Superman, whereas we could argue In Space is also below Superman and below, and perhaps just to say above Spider-Man and Wonder Woman. It's almost a matter of personal choice of how one chooses to view the material. Now, it's all about whether or not you want the scale of the story to be as, as epic as what it can be, well, as epic as you want it to be, which gives a great deal of personal choice in the viewer. Now, if you enjoyed this uh, video, do uh, give us a like, a share, and a subscribe if you haven't already, because we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. And once we do, we'll publish the first chapter of a dark fantasy horror novel. And until next time, take care.